we are doing a live video today and what we're going to do is i am going to go through the process of using a shrinking disc now this is for beginner action um so if you're a beginner and you want to learn how to use tools to minimize your bondo work stay tuned so let's go over what we got here what this is this is a rear valance for a 1968 Mustang. Now this is a factory original one. Now you can buy these aftermarket, all right? You can buy these aftermarket, but the thing is, they're junk. They don't fit. There's always a gap right here on the edge. You gotta modify them. You got to, uh, sometimes you literally have to cut a section here, widen it out, or possibly cut a section here, take some out, and it's better if you can use the factory original parts to use the factory parts, and that's what we're doing here. Now, believe it or not, I've already straightened this thing out tremendously. I've already, I've already got approximately two hours in it, an hour and a half to two hours of straightening it. You can see, um, I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but you can see how this lip is bent down, and then of course it straightens out over there. Uh, we got a bolt right here. We got to weld this hole up. These were rusted and rotted. We had to cut the nuts and bolts off of this. This is where our bumper, uh, our little bumper brackets go right here. Um, so we're gonna weld those up and then we'll clean those holes up. Um, it was really crushed in over here on this side and we got high spots from where we hammer and dollied it out. We got some high spots that we got to take out. One of them's right here. Um, there's a little one right in this area here. And then there's some right in this area here. Now, I'm not saying that I am a sheet metal perfectionist, okay? I'm not gonna tell you that. I'm not gonna sit here and say I am a professional when I use these. Now, I use these because they actually help. Okay, um, I'm not going to say that we're going to get away with straightening this out flawlessly perfect and not using any body filler at all. We're going to end up using this product definitely for sure. And what this is, this is polyester putty. So we will definitely be using some finishing glaze on it. We might have to use a little bit of Bondo because... I am not going to sit here one more time and say that I am a perfect 100% authentic sheet metal perfectionist that can actually straighten this and use it to the extreme where there will not be any body filler used at all in it. I'm not going to do that. Um, here's a piece right here that we had to swipe with some Bondo. This was completely crushed in. I'm going to show you what it looks like on the back. Um, Somebody drilled 27 holes in this. That's 27 holes that I had to weld up because they used a slide hammer on this little piece to pull the section out. Now, I hammer and dollied that out. I didn't use a shrinking disc or nothing. And I got it to the perfection where I can go ahead and, and do my body filler job, my Bondo job, block it out, and it's usable. This is a factory original piece. It's very important to use factory original pieces when you can, and this is a good example. Um, this actually goes on the front of the GTO, and the hood actually lines up in this galley right here, this little valley that you're looking at. That's where the hood lines up with it. So the hood, which is over here, has to fit inside a square box, and it has to fit perfect. From experience, I know for a fact that the aftermarket one of these suck, okay? They don't fit properly. The hood does not fit in the hole when you use one. This is an example of using the factory piece when you can. Now, here's our GTO over here. All the bodywork is done. This is basically paint ready. This is a paint ready car. We have done all of the bodywork on this, 
Uh, it needs its first block sanding, hand sanding, and then from there, we will spot prime it and then paint it. We will go over it meticulously to make sure we get all of the imperfections out and then it will be painted and done. Let's walk over here. We're gonna go look at our Mustang. And if you look right there, the Mustang is in process of being painted. We are now meticulously block sanding it out. This is the final prime job. There's no more primer that will be put on this vehicle. And what Minnie's doing, she is block sanding the car out for paint. Um, and what she does, she starts at the door jams and then works her way around, does the other door jam. And then she also does the rocker panels at the same time. And then we come back and hand block it so we can paint the car. These are the doors for the GTO. They're paint ready. All right. So the panel that we are talking about, I'm going to show you where it goes. The panel that I'm going to use as an example goes right down here. It starts on this corner right here, and then it goes all the way across over to the other corner. Now, this is where, this is the spot where that panel ends up on, this line right here. This is where that special clip goes that actually holds that thing in place. So it's very important to try to use the factory original one because the aftermarket ones suck. They totally, totally suck. Somebody was asking me if it was my birthday. I don't know. You said, was it your birthday? I don't know if that was for me or somebody else. No, it wasn't my birthday. No, it wasn't. So basically, the first thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and weld those holes up. Um, I got three holes that I got to weld up. And once those are welded, I'll grind those down. I'll get those where I need them. Then we will begin our stretching and shrinking using our shrinker disc, our uh, yeah, shrinking disc uh, grinder. So let me go ahead and get these welded up. Now, um, here's a situation. Let me show you how this thing mounts. This is where, if you look right here, this is where the clip goes that goes inside that hole. And this is the only thing that holds this side on. And I see that this one here probably broke, so somebody took a giant lag bolt and uh, they took a giant lag bolt, as you can see, and decided just to screw it into the metal. Now, once again, I'm going to go ahead and say I've already done a lot of hammer and dolly on this piece. Uh, this thing was actually totaled out. The owner wanted to buy a new one. I said, we're going to save this one. But um, this one was crushed in on both ends, of course, had a lot of damage. And the high spots that I got to take out are basically where I did my hammer and dolling. So um, let me weld these up real quick. And then once we get those welded up and finished, we're going to go on to the shrinking disc.
All right, sorry about that. I had to find a special tool that I got. I want to show you this tool. Um, these are spot weld pliers, and I want to come up there and show those to you. Uh, if we look right here, this is a special vice, you might say, vice grip that is designed for welding spot welds holes. And what you do is wherever you put a spot weld, this is actually copper, this is a copper pad, and then you would clamp it down like this and then you can weld right here. So this is actually a good item to have when you're welding something like this, because what that does, that will help us uh, from having slag on the bottom and it'll weld it up tight. Also in this area right here, I wanna go ahead and show you these. You can see where the cutting wheel has basically cut the hole. So that's another reason I'm gonna use the copper uh, spot weld pliers so I don't over weld that and we can try to keep the hole uh, nice and clean. So once again, what we're doing is we are saving a factory piece here and we're gonna use our shrinking disc on it when we can get to it. So let me do this, let me get these three holes welded up and then we're gonna proceed with our shrinking disc action. I guess I should have already had all this done before we did any uh, camera action because this is actually about this is actually about uh, using a shrinking disc. It's not really concerned of welding these in place, but it's got to be done, so we might as well do it. Let's go ahead and get this little hole welded up just real quick like. Sometimes when you're welding, it's a good idea to have a magnetic flashlight so you can shine it on the small area that you're welding. That's really a big help. That's a good tech tip there for my friend Keith. Here's another good tech tip. These clamps are like $1.25 over at uh, Harbor Freight. Very, very handy. If you need a clamp, this is the way to go. Just like that. Look at there.
Sometimes it's better to, when you got, when you're doing a hole like this and you got a weld on top of a weld, when you got a spot weld, all these little welds, and then you grind it down and you see like a little wrinkle or a, a slot there, it's better just to keep, just to weld that up than it is to actually keep grinding because if you keep grinding, you're going to lose thickness of the metal. So it's better just to spot weld that little spot up, even though there wasn't a hole there, um, it's better to do that than it is to, to keep grinding and try to get rid of that imperfection. See, there's one more little spot. Let me get that real quick. Just like that. Because what we're trying to do, we're trying to minimize our body work. This is one of the ways that we're learning how to do that. This spot, let me get the camera, I want to show you. That spot is basically ready for DA sanding and primer. And you can see right there, look how clean that came out. Really, really nice. So I know that uh, some of you are probably being bored by watching this, but there's actually people out there that would like to learn how to repair panels. Once again, I'm going to go ahead and say I am not a professional panel beater. When I say that, there's actually people that can take this piece of sheet metal and use shrinking discs and stretchers and and english wheels and all that and completely restore this without using any body filler at all that is not what we're doing here what i'm doing is i am showing you how to do a repair job professional repair job that you might be able to save that panel and also save money to take this panel i'm going to go ahead and say it to take this panel to a professional uh, sheet metal person that does this and can straighten that out without using any Bondo at all would cost you a fortune. You can probably buy 10 or 15 of these things for the price that it would take to take it to a, a professional sheet metal straightener guy, kind of like the guy that I bought those shrinking discs from. It would cost you a fortune <clears throat> to have him actually completely straighten this flawlessly perfect. So all I'm trying to do is just kind of get it to where I can still use uh, the piece and, and be happy with what I'm using, if that makes any sense. Very important that we keep these holes right here because this is again, this is where the bumperettes go. Right? You got your bumper, and then you got the two bumperettes that go right here. So it's very important. Once we get this welding done, we'll get into the shrinking bit of it. 
Okay, so now that we got those welded up, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and grind those real quick and then we'll move forward. clean those holes up and then from there we'll finish the body work on it so we got our holes welded up that's a done deal all right what we're doing here we are saving this panel this is a panel that we need to save and it's very important that we do that so now that we've welded that up and all that's done we're going to go ahead and move forward on using our shrinking disc, but before we do that, we have to find out, we have to go ahead and find out if we got any more dents that we might need to hammer and dolly out. So let me get the camera over here now. I didn't want my camera too close because I don't want to ruin my uh, $1,200 fucking iPhone. That's how much these fucking things cost now. Uh, and. The, the sparks from the welder will be attracted to the lens. And I've already had to have, uh, on my phone, the one we're filming with, I've already had to have uh, one of the cameras replaced on that. And I'm gonna tell you right now, it ain't cheap, okay? I think it was 225 bucks to replace one of these fucking cameras on this thing. So now that we've got that done, let's move forward and quit the bitching and hollering and uh, see if we can get this. I got one more spot right here I gotta weld. Let me get that real quick. Uh, looks like uh, there's a spot right there. I just wanna get that welded up and then we'll move forward. But this is what it takes to, to restore the panels that you need to use. There's an edge just right here, it looks like uh, it looks like, um, I don't know what it could be, but it looks like there might have been a crack or something there. So I just want to weld that up to get that back in shape and uh, go down the road with it. So we're going to take these again. And these are really handy tools if you ever need to use them. I mean, you see what I'm using them for, and they really work out well for this type of action. 
But let me go ahead and weld this real quick. I want to get this welding done. And I hope everybody's having a good day out there today. It's raining like shit out here in Moab. Um, I live in a fucking flood zone, of course. And uh, I need to get that fixed. So let's go ahead and get this done. And we'll move down the road. That's it right there. That's all I had to do. And I'm just gonna go ahead and let you know something about welding metal. Welding sheet metal is harder than welding eighth inch metal or angle iron or flat steel. The thinner the metal gets, the harder it is to weld. So when you see these guys out there that are welding eighth inch thick steel and angle irons and they're TIG welding, um, the stainless steel that's you know that thick okay this is harder to weld than your basic metal that you would see people welding on so sheet metal is hard to weld up people going on here that it takes a meticulous amount of time to actually do this type of work this isn't uh, let's get it done in you know 45 minutes this is an extreme type of job that can take hours and hours and hours to actually make it right and that my friend is the truth Okay, we're gonna go ahead and try to see if we can set this camera up in an angle where we can actually see what's going on. Now, once again, I just wanna let you know that I have already, let me go ahead and set the camera, hang on one second, people. I gotta get these legs out on my tripod. All right, that looks a little bit better right there. Yeah, let's go with that angle right there. That looks pretty good. Let me, okay, so now we got the tools, we got the piece in line, and then I can move the camera around as I go. So I think we got it okay right there. All right, so, like I told you before, I went ahead and I took my hammers right here that you're looking at. So I took my body hammers, various sizes and kinds, and I went ahead and hammered and dollied this out. And I got it pretty straight. Now, I can actually go ahead and probably use it just like it is. And here's another hole. Look at that. I got to weld that up, but I'll weld that up later. We're not going to do it right now. So anyway, I could probably go ahead and bondo this up and use it just like it is, but I want to eliminate using bondo. 
I want to try to get it down to where I'm only using a minor, minimal amount of Bondo. Once again, we're not going to get this flawlessly, perfectly straight where we can only use 2K primer. It's not going to happen. This panel was in very bad shape. Um, it, was, it was beat to shit, and we almost had to throw it away. But once again, I like to keep these panels because these fit perfect and the aftermarket ones don't. Now, we got a small crease right here, and I'm going to get a magic marker so we can mark these and you can see what's going on. Okay, so we're back. So basically, before we do any shrinking at all, we want to find our low spots and our high spots, and we need to hammer and dolly those out. So as I'm looking down this edge right here, I see there's a crease right here. There's a crease right there, and I need to hammer that out because it's pushed in. And what that crease is doing, it's making this warp. So it's very important that you always hammer and dolly everything out before you start shrinking. Um, as I run my hand down it, I've already got this hammer dollied out. This is in pretty good shape right here. It's gonna need some shrinking. This is a little bit low in this area right here. I'm gonna go ahead and circle that. That right there needs a little hammer and dolly. When I say hammering, we're gonna be flipping this over and hammering from the back side. This right here feels pretty good. I've already hammered and dollied that out. There was a high spot right here. I went ahead and hammered that. And then over here in this area, there's something fucking uh, funky going on. So we're gonna try to straighten that out and then I'll show you how to do that. So let's start with this back here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip this over. Now I got me a makeshift work table here is what I got. You can see that. And I also got my anvil here and I do use the anvil but what we're going to do is we're going to use the wood block right now. That's a softer surface to hammer on, and it's going to give us more uh, work area and, and get us to where we won't stretch the metal as much by using the wood versus using the metal. So I want to get that to where I want to do this. And since this is a long piece, I'm going to go ahead and get my Harbor Freight clamp out. And I'm going to clamp that down like that. That way I can use both my hands. And then right here in this area here, I'm going to go ahead and mark that with my marker. Right here, there's a high spot. We're going to get the camera down here, and I'm going to hammer that out using my body hammer. Let's go ahead and move the camera. This is what live action is. I can't edit this out, so there's nothing I can do. Okay, so we got the camera down. Now this is a high spot, and I got two or three different hammers here. This hammer is actually a door skin hammer, but what's good about using this hammer on this type of action, it's round. Do you see that? It's got a curve to it. This has got a curve to it going this way, but, and it's also a big oval shaped head. This would actually be a good hammer to use on this. And then we can come back with one of our flat face hammers or possibly a shrinking hammer. So we're gonna start out and we're gonna go ahead and get this crease out of here. And as I'm hammering, I'm not just hammering it, I'm pulling, pulling it like this. And you can see I'm not even hammering it hard. So we almost got that one almost all the way out. We're going to go ahead and take this hammer this has a shrinking head on it. This is called a shrink head hammer. And all we're gonna do is lightly tap on that.
just like that. Now, here's another trick. We can go ahead and take this pick hammer. There's a body line right here. So by having this crease that we had, kind of deform that. And then you can take this. Just like that. Let me take this pick side here. We got a few high spots I'm looking at right here. Just like that. Once again, you don't want to hit your sheet metal hard. If you hit it real hard, or you hit it, if you over pound on it, it's going to stretch the metal and there's going to be a high spot. Then you'll have to take that out. Now, another tool that we can use is called a hand dolly. Now, these come in all different kinds and sizes, all right? And you can find the one that you need that fits the contour. And I see that this is a flat surface, so we're going to use that. And then you can come back. That's actually really nice, and I'm going to show you that when we get done here. So we're going to leave that one just like it is. We're not going to mess with it. Um, I noticed there was a little imperfection in this area. We're going to go ahead and repeat our process. Once again, we got to get all of the lows and high spots out before we use a shrinking disc. We have got to get that done. That's very important that we do that first. And we also need to figure out how we can clamp this bitch down on here so we can actually do the job we need to do. Okay, so um, I'm going to take my block once again. I got the wood here. We're going to take the shrinking hammer and I'm just going to hit it. Now I've already done this area, I can see that, but I want to do it one more time. take this hammer right here. Once again, we use different hammers for different stuff. This actually has a very small curve in it, so we're going to take it. Just like that. And that feels 100% better. Now, this is the problem we have. From doing what we just did, what we did is there's a lip on here. I don't know if you can see that lip right there. We've kind of deformed that lip. So what we have to do now is we have to come back and hammer dolly that lip to get it flat. But we're not going to use our block. What we're going to use on this one, let me see if we're in the camera. Yes, we are. We're going to go ahead and use our anvil. And the reason we're doing that it's because it's got a nice square edge right here. So this is where we're going to take one of our hammers here, our flathead hammers. And we're going to get that lip. We're going to square that lip out. And just to let everybody know, later on, I will come back and grind these welds down on the back side. They will not stay like that, if anybody was wondering. So we just got our lip straightened out. Now, to finish that lip out, I'm going to bring it over here. You want to do minimal hammering. It's very important. And the reason I say that is because every time you hit the metal with a hammer, what you're doing is stretching it. So you want to be, just be really careful in doing this, and you don't want to keep hitting the metal. Do it as light as possible. And 
we're gonna come back here again and we're gonna go ahead and bend this just a little bit more. There we go. All right. So we can come back later, we'll clean that edge up. We'll make sure that it's nice and uniform all the way around. I see there's a problem right here on this one. And so what we're gonna do is take our anvil, we'll turn it around here. And it looks like it needs to be, there we go, right there. Actually, to fix that lip, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these, this crescent wrench. And I prefer to use different size crescent wrenches for this instead of pliers. When you use pliers, um, they don't work as well. But when you take a crescent wrench, you can go ahead and stick that on here, just like this. And do you see how I'm doing this? I'm bending this lip back out by using my crescent wrench and getting it squared up. And then, once I get that out, now I can take my hammer and my anvil. And get that back in shape how it's supposed to be. Now our lip has started to look normal again. Now this is going to take a little bit more work. What I'm doing, I'm just basically going through steps and procedures and showing you very quickly of how to repair panels. I noticed that this right here is, is in bad shape where this goes. So we'll just take it like this. And now that is, that's in perfect condition. Um, I believe I had to hammer this out right here. So we'll get to that later. Let's go ahead and get to the shrinking disc part of this because that's what this is about. And I basically showed you what you should do first before you get into shrink disking. So we're gonna go ahead and set our table up. And once again, this is just a makeshift table that I rig up so I can use it. And then we're going to go ahead and do this right here. And we got a high spot in this area right here. This is a high spot, people. And I'm going to show you that here in a minute. Let me get this all clamped. I don't want this thing to take off on me when I'm actually doing the job. All right. So we got a high spot right here. This was all crushed. This whole area was crushed in. And believe it or not, and I wish I would have started this, um, I wish I would have showed you this panel when we first started on it. Uh, but like I said, I've already got several hours in this thing and I don't think everybody wants to sit there for three hours watching. So this is a high spot right here. Let me show you how you find your high spots to use your shrinking disc. The first thing we're gonna do is we are gonna take this grinder here and we're gonna go ahead and grind our area down where our shrinking disc is gonna be used. Hang on one second. I had to grab a couple more tools that we're gonna need for this job. And this is one of them right here. Always wear the protection that you need when you're doing the right job.
Make sure that you have a sponge and some water available. That is a must. Okay, so I used that grinder there. Obviously, that ain't doing it right. I showed you that. What we're going to do now, we're going to get a DA sander with some 80 grit on it. We'll get that down to bare metal. spot is right there in that area. What we need to do to use our shrinking disc, this is very important, is you need to get a sharpie, a big sharpie. And what this is, believe it or not, this is going to be our lubrication for our shrinking disc so it doesn't burn up or warp the metal. All right, so this is a lubrication and we're going to go like this with our shrinking, with our metal. Now, you can't see this high spot like I can see it, all right? But this is where our high spot is, right here. And it's not that bad, but it's still a high spot that we need to get out. So you're gonna lube it up like that, and then the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take a, a, <clears throat> a metal file, And now if you look really close, you can see where the metal file is taking away. You can see that. You can see where it's taking away the, uh, the, mar the magic marker. And that is our high spot right there. Now, this is where it gets a little bit dangerous. <clears throat> this is where it gets a little bit dangerous, and you really need to be paying attention because you do not want this thing to take off on you. This is a very high-speed RPM DeWalt grinder, and this can be dangerous, so you got to be really careful. So you want to have your water and your sponge available, and this is our shrinking disc right here, just to let everybody know. It's a stainless steel disc. And what this disc does, this creates heat. This creates heat on our panel. And what it'll do, it will heat the panel up. And then when I take my sponge and I cool it down, it will shrink and stretch the panel to get rid of our high spot.
Then we're gonna take our sponge, just like this. And if you look close, you can see, you can see the heat coming off of it. You can see, there it is right there. So what we've done just now, we have removed, we have completely removed our high spot. There's no more high spot there. Completely gone. There's a little bit of a high spot here where I did my hammer and dolly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and get that out real quick. And this is basically an alternative to using Bondo. And if you can master this, that feels really nice. Uh, you can't see it, but we're not even done with that yet. What I was saying is if you can master using the shrinking disc, it's going to eliminate a shitload and tons of Bondo work. You're actually going to save money because you're going to save money on sandpaper and you're going to save money on wear and tear on your air tools. And it's just going to be an overall nicer and, and better job by using the shrinking disc. So we have a minor high spot. We got some minor high spots here from using our hammer. Remember I showed you we were using our hammer on that area. And then the next shrinking disc that I want to use, I don't want to use this big one on that. And I'm going to show you this, so let me get over there and get it. <clears throat> and what we got here, we got a mini shrinking disc. This is a mini shrinking disc. This is for very little, small, minor areas like we're going to be doing right here in this area. But before we do that, we want to take our lubrication. This is what happens if you don't use your lubrication. All right? And then what happens, you start creating a, building up a, 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 a wall between the shrinking disc and the metal. And then you're not creating the right heat that you need. So it's very important that you always use this. So we're just going to go like that. All right? And there's just a... Minor, minor, okay? Just really minor high spots there. And that's from using our hammer and dolly. Remember, I was telling you about that. Very important. So, once again, I should have gloves on, and somebody probably already said that. If this thing hits your hand, it will cut it. So you want to be very careful. actually cut my hand open with that thing so very important to uh, be careful and you want to take your sponge if you look close you can see the smoke do you see that I don't know if you can see it in the camera it's very hard and that's per that's gone it's gone all right well, now we do have a low spot right here. I'll have to come back and hammer that out. And then there's also a low spot here. And you can basically see that in the camera if you look close. You can see there's a dark area here. There's a dark area. That's telling you there's a low spot there. All right, that's a low spot. But this is where it was crushed in very, very hard. Um, I don't even know if I told the owner that I was gonna save this or not. I, I don't know, okay? But I always save these panels, um, and the owners usually are very, very happy that I do because this actually saves them a boatload of work. Here's a high spot right here. Let's go ahead and get this out, and then I think we're going to go ahead and call it quits.
I think everybody's got the message on how this works. Go ahead and clamp that down. So we got a high spot right here. Let's go ahead and get that out. We're going to take our DA sander with 80 grit. Now, one more thing I do want to tell you. This is epoxy primer. Epoxy primer is a non-sandable primer. So it might gum your paper up. All right. Uh, this primer has been on here for like seven years. So it's probably, you know, dry, super dry. But if you have epoxy primed your vehicle, um, and you try to sand it, it will gum your paper up. So we're gonna go ahead and repeat our process one more time. I can see the high spot. I, I, I don't think you can. I can see it, okay? Then we're gonna go ahead and take our file. And I forgot to finish this. We need to, I'm gonna go ahead and take you through this one and show you how to finish it completely. Um, so you're gonna take your file and you're gonna make sure it's going the right way. And if you look real close, we actually have, where did my magic marker go? Here it is. Okay, so if you look really close, I'm going to go ahead and mark this. We have a high spot here, 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 and there. Those are all our high spots on this section right here. Now, we can do it two ways. We can do it like I did it, or we can take this little this little one here, and we can do each individual one, one at a time like this. So you basically saw me do two types of shrinking where we actually took this one and we went over the whole thing just like this, all right, and it shrunk it down. And then you saw me take the small one, all right, when you find multiple high spots and all those high spots are gone. I'm going to show you how to finish that out here. And then you would do each one individually. Very, very nice tools, people. If you don't have a set of these, you need to get some, okay? You need to get a set of shrinking discs. I'm telling you now, it's gonna change the whole situation of how you do body work, trust me. So the way that we're gonna do this now, we're gonna take our file, just like this, and we're gonna go ahead and file that down. And if you look close, now you can see when I'm filing it, it's a long line instead of all these little spots.
Let's take our DA sander. We're going to go ahead and get it prepped up. How nice that came out people look at that that came out awesome I'm telling you if you can get in the habit of using a shrinking disc you're gonna be more proud of your work it's gonna come out a thousand look at that it's gonna come out a thousand times better we're gonna go ahead and finish this out and then my friend Pete's got to get back to work Okay, that, that feels awesome. Now, I do got some imperfection here. I still got to do some hammer and dolling in this area. I'm just kind of giving you the basics of what's going on using this tool right here, okay? Let me get this out of the way. I don't want this falling off the chair. There we go. Okay, so, yeah, it's, uh, when you use this tool, I'm going to tell you, you're going to freak out. You are going to say to yourself, I can't believe this. This is, this is like magic, okay? Now, let's say that we go ahead and do that, but this area right here might be a little crooked. See that body line right there? So I'm just using that as an example, or you might still have a small high spot or something imperfected. What we can do, we can take our slap hammer... And that'll help us get that line back in shape, see? Yeah, it, it's unbelievable what a shrinking disc will do for you. Let's go ahead and take our file. We're going to go ahead and file this down. And I'm going to tell you one more time, by no means am I a metal expert in using this stuff. Okay? This is just a video to show you, the beginner, how to use it and what you can use this for to really work to your advantage. What it takes to actually, let me get the camera up here. All right, because we want to get a good look at this. And I want to go over everything with you one more time. Okay. And I got my, I got Minnie's uh, phone right here. I want to make sure that I'm in the picture. So, what we just did is we just shrunk this metal down. We saved this panel for the owner. It's going to be the factory original panel that we're going to need to use to make that Mustang in there. So, concourse restoration like it's supposed to be. There we go. Okay, and it came out awesome. I'm really happy. Um, if I would have used that shrinking disc to get this where I wanted it, we would have ended up using, we would have ended up slapping tons of Bondo on that, taking it off, putting more Bondo, taking it off. Now, I can go ahead and use my, um, my spot putty. Let me get that.
Now, by using this shrinking Dick's aspiration, I could go ahead and use this, the glazing finish putty, and this will be in perfect condition. Do you see what's going on, people? We're making the job easier on ourselves. We're giving the owner the satisfaction that this is a factory OEM piece that he can still use, and all his body lines are going to look really, really nice, and you're going to be happy with the job just like the customer is. And if you're doing this at home, then you're going to be happy with it just like you would be doing your own work at home. So um, that's how I do it when I want to save these panels. And I mean, even on the back side, there's not even any, all the hammer marks are gone. I had hammer marks on here from hammer that they're gone. And I have now basically saved that panel. I still have to do, I still got about another hour, two hours of work in it, but it doesn't matter because this is the satisfaction that's gonna let you go to sleep at night and tell yourself, I did it the right way, if that makes any sense. So, let me get the camera. I got a runny nose over here. Do you believe that shit? I cannot believe it. All right, back to uh, square one. This is our shrinking disc, okay? I don't like advertising for people. I'm going to let you know that right now. I don't like advertising for people, but I'm going to show you where I bought these because finding a good shrinking disc is very hard to, um, to find somebody that's, Really reliable. I got this from Ray. What's his name there? I can't. Was it Ray Schuler? Ray Schiller, Schuler. Uh, Ray Shalalios. Anyway, look him up. Here's his website. And tell him my friend Pete sent you. He doesn't know who I am. He'll probably say, okay, I don't know that guy. But if you need some shrinking discs and you want to get into shrink disking, stretching, shrinking metal and you want to make your body work a better perfection than what you're doing, I suggest that you contact this guy. Now, another thing that he sells is this backing plate. This is a must. You have to have a, a ba this backing plate. And then this one here, this backing plate, I actually bought at Harbor Freight. And the grinder that I'm using, believe it or not, is a drill master from Harbor Freight. And then another thing you're going to need from Harbor Freight is this piece right here that actually sets down inside here. Now, on this one, I don't think I have that. I think I just have, yeah, I just have this right here. But you can actually buy a flat one like this to put in there if you want to get one. All right. Now, one more thing I want to go ahead and say. You aren't going to use these all the time. This is something you will not use on every single job but you will use it just like you saw me use it to get the panel the way that you need it. Now, when we look over here, when we look at our GTO, this GTO had serious, serious body damage on the roof. It had hail damage. It had dents all over it. And I had to do a lot of extreme hammer and dolling and also I had to use, you got it, the shrinking disc on it. So very important, people, very important to use the right tools for the right job. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete. And I'm happy. That came out great. I got a couple more spots you can see right in this area here. I got to get, and I have to test fit this on the car to make sure that it's still in usable condition. Believe it or not, this is the last thing that we are fixing on the Rustang. This is it. This is the completion and the last part of the jigsaw puzzle that you will see fixed on uh, the Rustang. Now, he's got some other pieces over here that he purchased. Um, this actually goes to the Camaro. I got three cars ready for paint now, so... Uh, this is another piece. Now, this is an NOS piece that he bought. 
This is the front lower balance. And I'll go over that and make sure that that is in good shape. But uh, we'll make sure that that's a work usable and workable. And uh, the Mustang will be painted. So there you go. That's it. What's going on with uh, Money Pit? Let me tell you what's going on with Money Pit. I'm waiting on a windshield to get here. I think I've already told everybody about this windshield action, but we're going to go over it again. Um, I want everybody to pay attention, and I want you to look at this name right here, and I want you to see where that's made. It says made in China. Let me explain something to you. This glass is not made in China. That piece of glass is made in Canton, Ohio, at the largest glass factory in the world that you got it. China owns. China owns that and employs over 2,500 Americans to work for them. So if you care about our country and you still think U.S. number one, you better wake up and see the light. And the light is, is that these people are moving in and basically taking over. And as you can see, the Made in USA a.k.a. China windshield, didn't fit in my fucking car. Did not fit. So I can't even drive Money Pit until I get another windshield. That will actually work. So there you go, people. There you go. Right there. Right there. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete doing body work. I just got done with that, by the way. Came out beautiful. Um, there was some extensive action going on. Uh, I still have to do the fenders. When the fenders are done, I'm going to do those next. Uh, we're done with that car for a while. Um, we're going to go ahead and get the Mustang painted. Once we get the Mustang painted, I want everybody to take a look in this corner over here. I want you to look really, really close. Look real close. What you're looking at is what it takes. That's all the stuff that goes on a car in boxes. Now, that's not everything, but that's most of it. The owner's been buying parts for over 10 years, and he's shipping them to me slowly, and then he's also buying other parts. But that is a car in a box, people, right there. That's what that is. And before we go, I just want to let everybody know if you want to stay healthy and you want to live a long life, do what you got to do to get out there and do what you got to do to stay healthy. I ride my bicycle every day, minimum 18 miles. I couldn't go this morning. It was raining very hard, so I will go this afternoon. But I'm telling you now, don't sit on your ass. Don't be a lazy ass and do something with your life besides sitting on your ass. My friend Pete, your friend Pete, right here, using the metal shrinker and doing what I got to do to make myself go to sleep at night and say, I did it right. We'll see you later, guys. Take it easy.